So today's notes are not really going to have much new information in them because you've already heard about solids, liquids, and gases before since like third grade. Um, but one that you probably don't know as much about is plasma. So we want to add that into our list of different states of matter that we might encounter here on Earth. So we'll start with the three that you're most familiar with and just talk about a few of the properties that um, we can use to describe them. And again, this is another way that we can classify matter. So this is basically in terms of how the particles are arranged. So for solids, um, solids have a definite shape and volume. So that means that it is going to hold its own shape and it has a volume that you can measure um, that is always going to stay the same for that object. If we are able to see the atoms that make up a solid, we can tell that the particle distance is close. That means they are really packed in tight. And according to the particle theory of matter, one of the things that you wrote down in our first set of matter notes is that particles are always moving. And so because they're packed in so tightly, all they can really do is vibrate in place. So as we add energy to the particles, they start to move away from each other and we get a liquid. So liquids take the shape of whatever container they're in. That means if I put a liquid into a water bottle, it's going to take the shape of the water bottle. If I take that water and pour it into a bathtub, it's going to fill out the bottom of the bathtub and take the shape of that bathtub. It does have a definite volume. So when I take water from a water bottle and pour it into a bathtub, it's not going to fill out the bathtub. It's just going to fill the bottom part or even just have a short layer over the bottom. So it has a volume that you can measure also. Particle distance is close, but according to this picture here, it's not quite as close as it is for a solid. And you can see that there's a little bit of space for the particles to slide over one another. Finally, when you keep adding energy to the particles, we end up with a gas and the particles continue to move away from each other. So now that we have a gas, uh, they take the shape and volume of a container. So you can think about like blowing up a balloon if I have a long skinny balloon and I blow into it, the air that I blow in is going to take the shape of that balloon and it's also going to fill out the entire balloon. All the air is not going to gather to one side, but it's going to fill out the entire volume. So if we could again see the particles, the atoms, um, we could see that they're spread out and because they have a lot of energy, they're able to fly around and move freely. So with gases, there is a distinct relationship between the volume, which involves the space between the particles, the temperature of the gas, which has to do with how fast the particles are move, moving, and then the pressure of the gas, which has to do with how often the particles collide in the space that they're in. So the first relationship is that if I have a rigid container, that means the container will not expand. Um, it's going to hold its own shape. If I increase the pressure, so say I try to take the container and push in from the outside and make it take up a smaller space. If I increase pressure, then the volume will decrease. So that Again, like I said, it'll take up a small space. You're going to pack it in, in a, into a tighter area. The second relationship is that when temperature increases, so as I add energy, the pressure increases. So just think about this. If I'm adding energy, then suddenly they get like a boost and suddenly they are flying all over the place and colliding with each other even more. And this is just to point out that this is again happening in a rigid container where there's no extra space to move around. It's all contained in a certain area that is not expanding. Finally, the third relationship, um, we can imagine this in a flexible container like a balloon. If temperature increases, then the volume will also increase. So if it can take up more space, it will take up more space as it increases in temperature. So you can think about um, leaving a flat soccer ball outside on a sunny day. The heat from the sun and the energy from the sunlight can help inflate the ball. It might not inflate it perfectly, but it will make the ball be less flat than it was before. One last thing to remember about gas is that if it has the, the chance to move from high pressure to low pressure, then it will. And you can just think of yourself in the crowded hallway. Much, most people would much rather be in a place that doesn't have so many people kind of bouncing off of them um, 
instead of being in the middle of a big crowd. So think about being in the middle of a class change and then getting into your classroom where there's a lot more space for you to move around. And that's the way gas also behaves. Finally, the last state of matter that you're responsible for knowing and that we'll encounter a lot on Earth is plasma. Honestly, when I was in school, we didn't learn about plasma. Uh, we may have kind of talked about it briefly, but it wasn't something that I was expected to know. So um, this is one that for me has been the least familiar, and I'm sure it's the same way for you. So very much like gas, plasma takes the shape and the volume of whatever container it's in. Most of the time, it's not even going to be in a container. What happens is that it has electrical charges because electrons have been separated from the atom. And in a couple of months, we'll talk about why that creates a charge. But just know that electricity flows through plasma, and often we will see light as a result. What happens next is that the remaining atomic nuclei, so remember electrons are spinning around the nucleus, so when they're taken away, all we have left is the nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons. They are packed really close together, so this is a really high-pressure situation. And because they're packed close together, they are colliding, but they also have a lot of energy, so it's at really fast speeds. So some examples of things that you might see that are plasma would be like fire or lightning. And so this picture gives you a really good um, idea of what the particles look like as we add energy. From left to right, we end up with solid when it has really low energy, liquid when it's kind of at a moderate energy, and then as we add energy, we get gas, and finally to plasma, which is like superheated gas. And the top left corner is a really good uh, diagram to remind you of what the structure of an atom is. So I want to go through a few examples with you and identify what state of matter each of these would be considered. So fire is our first one. I'm trying to pick a pretty color here. <laughs> so fire, I just said, is a plasma. So you're going to write that in your blank. And I just got a new stylus, and it's kind of squeaky, so I don't know if you'll hear it or not. Um, I also apologize for the poor handwriting, but this is as good as it's going to get, at least for now. Um, so lemonade, that's a pretty obvious one. What do you think it is? Kind of like blues clues here, so it should be liquid. Helium, um, many of you know that helium is what we put in balloons, um, and so because we put it in a balloon and it floats in the air, we know that this is a gas. Some of you did this for your project. Gold, um, symbol is AU. Oh, we know gold, we've held gold before. This is a solid. Mercury is one that you might not be extremely familiar with, but um, fun fact is that it is like the only liquid metal, so we'll write down liquid here in the blank. A rock, I think it's a pretty obvious one. It's going to be a solid. Lightning is another one that we just mentioned as a plasma, so this is superheated gas, often shown as a electrified light. Finally, you have carbon dioxide, this is what we breathe out because we're dealing with breathing. It is a type of gas. So um, make sure that tomorrow when you come in, if you have any questions about these notes, let me know. And we're going to get lots more practice with this, especially because plasma is kind of a new um, topic for a lot of us. So come in ready to work and ready to understand this a little better. And again, ask questions either here on Edmodo or in class tomorrow. I'm looking forward to working with you more on this.